Good afternoon, everyone. You getting tired yet? Hanging in there? Uh, my name is Dr. Chip Chambers, and I'm the former chief of endocrine surgery at Vanderbilt, but I'm also the father of two children with the rare disease deficiency of adenosine deaminase 2, or DADA2. Now, DADA2 is a rare genetic disease, and it's mainly in children, but it can cause severe inflammation with strokes. Yeah, I just said that, strokes in children. Um, you may not even have known strokes could have, uh, happen in children. It also can cause immunodeficiency and bone marrow failure. Now, our personal story with DADA2 began years earlier. On one hot day here in Nashville, we were spraying our two-year-old daughter with the water, like you do, and we noted these small nodules on her skin. And something didn't look right to me. It just didn't look right. So a week later, we were in a pediatric dermatologist's office who said to me, I think those are flea bites. And I said, Mike, we don't have a dog and we don't let her play in the grass. So, you know, as a father and physician, you know, I knew something was wrong. So it took 15 years to get the diagnosis because the disease hadn't been discovered yet. The change really happened when Dr. Dan Kastner at the NIH in a group in Jerusalem, Israel, uh, it simultaneously published articles first describing the disease in the New England Journal of Medicine. Now, I want you to think about that just for a second. Two groups, same question, unaware of each other, right? So that's where we started really collaborating and realizing that collaboration was going to be the key uh, to DADA2. Now, that's great. We got a name, but that's not a plan, right? Most of you guys do business plans. We didn't have a plan for DADA2 either. So I called Dr. Kastner at the NIH and I said, we've got to get a global meeting together of doctors to talk about this, right? And he was like, yeah, yeah, we maybe can get 30 people and yeah, the NIH might be able to fund it. So on rare disease day, as it happened, I flew to the NIH to meet with Dr. Kastner and his team. And with just 10 minutes left in that meeting, which that was why we were there, he leans forward and he says to me, Chip, we can't fund the meeting. Without missing a beat, I leaned forward and said, Dan, don't worry about it. We've raised $250,000 and we formed a foundation. Now the fact was, we had not raised $250,000 and we didn't form a foundation. Uh, but I wasn't going to let that opportunity pass us by to pick a date to have this meeting. So we did that, and then in record time, I raised the money and we formed the foundation. So since then, we've really stopped thinking in a linear fashion in the Dada 2 Foundation. And it starts with, you know, spiderweb type thinking, moving from linear to spiderweb type thinking is what I call it. So see, in linear, linear thinking, you, one thing has to wait on another. It has to wait its turn before it gets there. But with spiderweb thinking, it invites collaboration across boundaries, and it's the mindset you really have to have to solve any complex problem out there. Now, at first, there was no treatment for the disease, but there was one line in that little paper in the New England Journal from the Israelis that said, you might want to try TNF inhibitors. That's the class of drugs used to treat rheumatoid arthritis, if you're familiar. You see, years earlier in Israel, a child was dying with severe vasculitis, uh, and all of a sudden they improved after a Hail Mary attempt was made to give the first TNF inhibitor that ever hit the market, and that was Remicade. So without a clinical trial, TNF inhibitors have become the standard of care for the treatment of DADA2, and we published it in John in 2023 in our consensus statement. Most importantly though, not one child has had a stroke since going on TNF inhibitors. Almost a miracle drug, right? So while TNF inhibitors were a treatment, they weren't a cure. So we wanted to keep this web mindset and, and pursue the whole patient, the whole, the whole picture. So we're building a DADA2 patient registry where we're collecting data and quality of life data to help us define new studies and where we need to go. And this web type thinking means we're doing multiple bets at the same time. So as the foundation, we amplify the global lab uh, science and forge partnerships that move care forward. This month, I just submitted a grant to the NIH for a point of care testing device that with a finger prick of blood, you could measure an 88-2 enzyme level in 15 minutes in your office. 
Currently, there's only one place in the U.S. that that can be done. And really exciting, we're pursuing enzyme replacement therapy after securing from a pharmaceutical company the intellectual property of what's called pegylated ADA2. That's a molecule that could restore this enzyme level, and we did that all for free. How many drug companies have you ever seen that gave somebody a drug for free? Any hands? I don't think so. So to you guys, the real knowledgeable folks out there, the entrepreneurs in the room, this is your language. It's really spider web thinking builds an ecosystem, doesn't it? It shares cycles to answers. It, it's shared protocols, it's interoperable data. You accomplish things faster. And that's really important when life is on the line than the things that you and I deal with every day in healthcare. So when I was a surgical uh, attending at Vanderbilt, I used to teach my residents something. And I said, never diagnose a disease as fictitious until you've ruled out all organic causes of disease. Now, after being a family touched by rare disease, I changed that and said, or until you've discovered the yet undiscovered rare disease that the patient's suffering from. So if you're not finding the answers in your company today, think in the spider web view ask those difficult questions, and we'll be doing that as our fifth international conference on Data 2 comes up in 2026. And I hope you can use this mindset uh, to sort of break things apart and speak more, uh, seek more of this spider web type approach where you can get answers fast. So I want to thank you for your time and attention, and as the kids might say, cheers. <laughs>